Yes, this is the beauty of it. Uh, this is a Nibri art for those of you joining in. I am your host, AJ Haypenny. And then uh, my co-host, uh, Brianna Woodward, um, is, is, is not with us today. Um, so taking a place is going to be Katie Baker. Katie Baker uh, is going to be your go-to on, on stuff because I am just irresponsible. And then, uh, <laughs> it's like with that. But I am, uh, I am in um, the childhood bedroom of my uncle. We got the uh, karate trophies in the back. Uh, I was a karate, big karate champion because uh, growing up, Daniel LaRusso, um, the kid from Karate Kid, was the only brown superhero we had. And, and so that was the closest thing that, that we had to somebody brown, even though, he was, even though we were Filipino and he was just Italian. Uh, he's, he, he, was, uh, he literally wasn't any other ethnicity um, aside from Italian. But then in '91, we had uh, we had Rufio um, in the movie in Steven Spielberg's Hook, and I said, "Thank God, we have two. And, <laughs> and then it just it just seemed to it just seemed to take off from there. But uh, I'm happy. I'm happy to be doing this shit. This is this is my favorite show that I do. Um, this, is my, this is my favorite show that I perform on. Um, this, do, do, doing the corporate stuff pays the bills, but um, but my ass is just like I have. I I have no ass now. Uh, like it's, <laughs> it's just absolutely absolutely stuck to the chair. And then I'm glad everybody's microphones are on and their screens are on because when I logged in, there's 40 people. And all of their all of their screens were off and all their microphones are off. I'm like, oh shit, they must have seen my set before. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, and, and, then, and then so like um, half halfway through, one of the bookers was saying, "Hey, um, did you want me to announce uh, to have their microphones and and cameras on as well?" Uh, like, no, that's fine. I am an artist. Uh, I, I I am part of inebriar. So like we don't go for that pesky laughter, if anything. <laughs> Total silence. I'm uh, like, fuck yes, I want it. <laughs> and then uh the way that the word it after is it just like turn on your microphones or you're fired. I'm like, okay, that's an experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, just like, oh, just like a fun thing. It's just, just like, I will fuck all you financially. Like, no, it's this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be fun, not not mandatory non consensual comedy. Like, my goodness, like it's, <laughs> it's supposed it's supposed to be fun for everybody. And so I try to wear a uh, different ugly sweater for every every show that I, that I do stuff. Um, so I have seven total. So I might be cheating when I when I use one at the same time, but. This is probably my, my favorite one. Oh, I love that one. Oh, that's Ooh. great. I love that. And then um, uh, someone I was dating oh, for a while uh, named Kevin. Uh, whenever I came, that's why I yelled, Kevin! And, uh, <laughs> and I think I only hung out with him because of that. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, so it did not last long, much like... <laughs> but anyway... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I realized that um, I, I'm not uh, I'm not the most woke individual um, uh, be, because um, when I was dating him at the time, it was just and Sam like, oh yeah, and my uh, my brother's getting married. I'm like, is he uh, is he straight? Like, yeah, he's a straight guy, and um, and he's taking the woman's last name. And then I laughed. And I'm just like, huh, yay! And, <laughs> and that was. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the end. Um, ironic coming from me, but it's, uh, <laughs> but that was the end. And, like I'm, I have not caught up on the uh, on on the wokeness at all. But then again, uh, none none of us really have. Um, these are tough times, guys. Like the only way that you know that you broke up with someone is if the Netflix password is changed, and that's that. Then that's it. And things are really over. You can't come back from deleting the Disney Plus because Mandalorian just came out. And you cannot have that if you ever want to talk to them again. But folks, I'm happy to be here. We are now live streaming fully on Facebook. I'm your host, AJ. Hey, Penny. And then um, our, my co-host for the evening, not Brianna Woodward tonight. She'll be back uh, a few weeks from now. But then uh, it's going to be Katie Baker. Say hi, Katie. So we can hear hi, you. hello. Yeah, it's, 
It's Katie Baker. So if you're reg regular on the show, you have seen her on. Katie, how has your week been? Um, it's been it's been all right. Uh, I'm I've only I, I work tomorrow at eight a.m. But uh, that's I'm, I'm I'm ready for that. And then uh, I, I'm at, I'm on the North Shore. I'm in the guest house. Uh, or in the guest room, really, but it's uh, it, it's like that's that's the bathroom right there. So I have my own bathroom when I like that's. Mm. So it doesn't even matter that it's like a fold out couch because it's like uh, the the bathroom. And also there's this freaky uh, Disney poster from Eastern Airlines. Wait, freaky Disney po Eastern Airlines? <laughs> like yeah. Wait, is, Di wait, is Disney like promoting an airline? That is scary. Yeah, in the eighties. <laughs> in the eighties, they were. Oh, in the in like the eighties, a, par a partnership, and it's yeah. There was like a ride called "If You Had Wings," and it was uh about the East Eastern Airlines and why you should get on a plane and fly somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fly to your death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't know if you heard this, Katie, but there were like talks because um, did you see the? If you watched any of Mandalorian at all, I've seen some of the the first season. Uh, same. I haven't seen the second season yet, but um, apparently uh, WWE superstar Sasha Banks is in it, and then they liked how well she did, that they want to have more WWE superstars, so there have been internal talks that uh, Disney might buy WWE. <laughs> hey, imagine. Oh, you wrestlers, wait for me! <laughs> <You're> uh. <laughs> it's just a mess. But Oh, it's 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 an absolute mess. But if you think about it this way, people no longer say like uh, uh, wrestling's fake. They're just like, well, everything Disney produces is fake. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> it's Imagineering. <laughs> oh my god! Including their airline, <laughs> which yeah, <laughs> which I just found out that that they had. Now, um, Katie, before we uh, before we continue on. Um, is there any more uh, stuffed animals, stuffed balloon animals uh, at, at your work that are just hanging over you, watching you like a god? Um, no, just just the one. But um, I, I looked up from an, an angle where I, the light was in the way, so I thought he was gone, and I had a moment of panic. <gasps> uh, but no, there's a the stuffed bumblebee that was by the register has been purchased, but uh, now there's a, a tiger patterned shark, so it's a tiger shark. So. Uh, <laughs> and then there's some mag some sparkly rainbow cow and uh another sparkly another rainbow dragon. Cow. Yeah. There's there's one named Aurora and she's like iridescent iridescent. So so they name these balloons. <laughs> oh they're there's like stuffed animals, but it's like it's like a squishy thing, but they each have different names, yeah. And like personalities, uh, like beanie babies kind of. Oh, so so mm -hmm. um can I cut them open and make soup? Or are they just really? Uh... <laughs> I feel like it's more of like the plush stuffing, so the fibers probably wouldn't do much for a soup, unless I don't know. It would it would be like a really stringy, wet mess. Oh, so kind of like current ramen now. Yeah, yeah, they're full of ramen. It's like <laughs> cooked somehow, and yeah, yeah. Nobody nobody knows how to get there, but um. Yeah, let me know when you got a narwhal, and uh, we'll we'll make we'll make a deal. All right, uh, I'll put it I'll put it in the 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 pickup order safe for the the cabinet. Uh, but yes, in the Disney vault. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but folks, right now we are streaming on Facebook Live. So if you are do if you're on the Inebriart page, uh, please share that. But if if you're not, I did share it on my on my Facebook wall. So. If anybody is uh, friends with me on Facebook, please share that because I want this to go from three people uh, to five people. And <laughs> I would just really, really, really appreciate that. And then um, uh, whenever I bring up uh, comedians, I try to have a, uh, I try to have non um, uh, gender specific pronouns. And then, but the last show I did today, um, I got the, I said a pronoun and it wasn't the right pronoun that a he, I'm like, oh no. Um, and oh, no. so I'm really trying to stick to the uh, non-gender specific pronoun. Um, so uh, this next individual, big fan of theirs, um, much younger than your average uh, comedian. And they were actually a finalist in the uh, Boston Comedy Festival and then we actually had him on before, but 
they were stealing McDonald's Wi-Fi. And I thought, <laughs> this is- <laughs> but this comedian assured me that they are now using stolen Wendy's Wi-Fi, which is. So <laughs> <much better. laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, give it up for Sam Rossi. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, uh, that McDonald's Wi-Fi thing is, uh, hold on, am I talking right now? Okay, yeah. cool. I am. We're moving. Uh, that McDonald's Wi-Fi thing is true. I was, uh, I was trying to get by on cellular data and it did not work, but this time <laughs> I'm connected to a, a real life Wi-Fi. So I'm, I'm ready to do it this time. Ooh, right, all right. Uh, I was driving around the other day and I saw a street sign that said, drive like your kids live here. So I quickly pulled the car over to the side of the road, walked into the nearest house and said, honey, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was talking to my friend last night and he was telling me about a statistic he read that really spooked him. It was, a, it was a statistic that said the average human in their lifetime will accidentally eat seven spiders in their sleep. Said that while you're asleep, a spider will crawl into your mouth and you'll accidentally swallow him whole because you're sleeping. And this will happen roughly seven times in your life. My friend told me this and he's like, man, isn't that the scariest thing you've ever heard? And I was like, nah, man, that's not very scary at all. That'd be really scary if you were like a spider. (laughs) Because you would get eaten, like that's way worse. Uh. I've been really jealous of mice for a while now, but I could never figure out why. And recently I cracked it. It's because mice have way better mazes than people do. (laughs) Hear me out. Mice mazes rock. They're full of walls and cheese. And when you get to the end, someone picks you up, carries you home and gives you more cheese. It's amazing. Uh, (laughs) uh, people mazes on the other hand are kind of the worst uh they're made of corn which would be awesome but you're not allowed to eat the corn it's a huge waste of corn i can't count on my hands the amount of times i've been thrown out of a corn maze for trying to eat the corn and that really sucks Not because I'm getting thrown out, but because we're in a corn maze. And sometimes that takes a very long time. Getting thrown (laughs) out of a corn maze is a 10 to 45 minute process. (laughs) (laughs) I do feel really bad for people who work security at a corn maze. That sounds like a super tough job. It would be like, help, that guy stole my wallet. Oh, which way did he go? Towards the corn? (laughs) That job sounds impossible. Uh, uh, I'm 17, so I'm in school right now. I used to like school, but then it got a little useless, you know? Like math right now. Math isn't a very helpful subject. I had one math problem the other day that was like, what's negative three? minus four and i was like how does that help you ever hmm well i don't have three apples i don't give four to susan how many apples do i not have <laughs> and look if you work with negative numbers it's probably because you're in debt <laughs> but if you're in debt it's already been established. You're not very good with numbers. <laughs> you have a double-edged sword. I had one math teacher the other day try to teach us how to use a map. What? 
She was giving us math homework and stuff. I'm like, nah, man, I got to get to sundial class. Math. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the crazy thing. The crazy thing was the reasoning behind it because she was like, well, what if one day you're lost and you don't have your phone? What if I don't have my phone? I'm a 17-year-old kid in this day and age, in this country, in this society, and you're asking me, what if I don't have my phone? But you assume I have my map with me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, well, thank you guys very much. My name is Sam Rossi, and uh, AJ, thank you again for having me. Yeah! <laughs> hey! Rossi, everybody. You, uh, you are a treat, and I, I'll be rooting for you next year. No offense to anyone else. Uh, <laughs> Sarah gave me uh, like the slightest, dirtiest look for half a second. I, don't... <laughs> <laughs> I always play favorites, and I'm not shy from that. But, but, but Sam, I'm, I'm glad you upgrade your Wi-Fi. And then do, do you remember um, what I said to you the second day I met you? Um, don't smoke the crack. I think you'll we'll make it. <laughs> um, I, I don't smell crack right now, which is which is a good sign. So as long as you stick to not smoking the crack, I, I think I think you're gonna make it. Uh, it was really weird because you didn't say anything to me before. You ju you just ran up and said, "Don't smoke crack," and I was like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't okay because I was smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but 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 Sam, like um, the whole process of of getting through, like uh, that that's that's absolutely fantastic. And then like, and then like out of people that have been doing it for a year, like you're easily one of the top five that's that's hustled the most. Like you and Brianna Woodward, like literally started around the same time. And then I do like three open mics in a row in Boston. I'm just like this kid is doing the exact same thing. And then like there's there's and then there's people my age because I'm 33 and there's people my age that like don't even do like one mic in that day and then they complain that they're they're not getting booked in places it's just like this kid he, he's just hustling and he has school tomorrow he's fucking, <laughs> he has oh, fucking you, homeroom <laughs> at seven <laughs> and, and, and just, you don't have to work until ten and you're not right and you're doing the same jokes for seven years. But, but again, Sam Rossi, <laughs> great job. And then uh, we'll definitely have to have more stuff. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, that, uh, that, was, that was fun. We're off to a damn good start. Um, I am going to do another um, uh, non-gender specific uh, introduction. Uh, this, this person, absolute sweetheart. Uh, one of my favorite people. Uh, I maybe even met him once before Zoom, but I like to think I met him through Zoom. Um, uh, my current co-host, very funny, ladies and gentlemen, Katie Baker. Hey, hello. Oh, man. Uh, it's, good. it's good to be here. Oh, uh, holy cow. And, uh, yeah, doing the, the things and the different stuff. Uh, Sam Rossi was talking shit about maps, and uh, I don't, that's not, I, I like maps. Uh, I hate that Twitter has a maximum of uh, how many uh, accounts you can follow. Like it's 5,000, especially like during the pandemic when you can't be doing things in real life. Like why should it still be like restricted? It's not fair, but I follow like, I, you gotta follow like at least like 50 <laughs> good map accounts. Even if it's like, whether it be old oh school God. maps or some kind of sciencey map that it's like what, or uh, like urban activity or like the development and stuff that are just like design and for things. But yeah, so that's what maps do for me. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, follow, follow my- How dare you, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> Go to your room. Yeah, on behalf of uh, <laughs> cartographers everywhere, I am in indignant. But um, so shortly before uh, I, I, I sent out a link to to this like to each of my parents but I'd sent the wrong link and I sent to a YouTube video of like this kid it's from um it's like that show everything is terrible but it's like this kid giving a weird speech and like have you ever had a dream and it's like this I was 
they're they're supposed to be watching and it's i just i so because i was distracted but that's fine distractions are okay uh we make mistakes that's what makes us human that's uh something <laughs> like that i like getting to hear the same like announcement over and over again at my work job of the during this unprecedented time we are here to serve the needs of customers who are now working and learning from home and then talking about how uh like oh yeah everyone's washing their hands although to be honest not once in my training did they ever say we have to wash our hands i mean because you could say that's common sense but it's it's like i don't know and sometimes like there'll be like not enough hand sanitizer and i'll have to like go and get some it's like there's a I don't know. I, I'm a high strung cashier. It's uh, bizarre that I've made it this far. Uh, <laughs> I've been, uh, I had some bad experiences in retail in the past. Like, uh, like from, uh, I worked at a thrift store and I got fired because uh, in addition to being late a lot, I had this like tantrum where I slammed a door and some lady who was like going through tea towels, like complained that she heard someone like slam. Oh, and I screamed. So that's like, I mean, either way it's uh, but um, that's like the, the stuff that, that uh, a basket case does. And, oh, yes, yeah, did you share, did you, did you share it on the, the Facebook? All right, right, I'll, I'll, I'll lose track of like how there's that extra vein, like now in the world of Zoom of uh, where things, so it's like can teeter into, I love the inter, inter, interdimensional stuffs. Like I'd love to, I would love to like make an alternate reality game someday, but I like don't have the concentration or focus for it. But um, yeah, uh, safety, retail, retail. <laughs> yes, that's another thing of being uh, very focused and being scatterbrained and it's uh, doing things and just kind of fumbling and stumbling. And uh, also, yeah, the mood stuff, like of losing my temper, like really dumb times. Like I thought this kid might've been like, trying to steal a Slim Jim. So I was like, hey, put it back or something, but I didn't like sugarcoat it or anything. So his mom was like, uh, is there a problem with him touching the Slim Jims? This is before the pandemic. So uh, that was that. Okay. But um, I'm like, I was just saying, just, that sounded a little accusatory. And and like the kid, little kid's like, I was scared. And it's just like, but lately, at my current job, I'm like less annoyed with kids, even though the other day one of them did sort of try to steal a Kit Kat bar. And uh, cause I didn't, I saw on the machine that it had, he had on his hand, but I like didn't realize that there was one already in the bag. So he like pulled, pulled one over on like me and his mom, but we did figure it out. But it's like, I was ready to be like, oh no, I made a mistake. That was, and then it's like, but I'm, I'm less, I'm less hurt about it. I didn't go on a, go on a I didn't have a, a hissy fit or temper tantrum. It was just like anything like more like kind of sympathetic towards like kids because they're bored and there's all these colorful things for them to like touch and do, I don't know. It's, uh, but yeah, they're either way, they're annoying and uh, people are, are silly. Uh, there is a customer who um, I, asked, she, I asked if she wanted a bag. She's like, no, I hate those. They kill animals. And, and I, I look her, I look her, I look her uh, dead in the eyes and I say, so do I. That's oh! <laughs> it, it, it was in, it was in my head, the idea of just saying that of a thing, but it's, um, but yeah, she, then she followed up with like, especially seals, like seals oh. are the ones <laughs> most in danger. And just like, imagine like, oh, imagine plastic sharks. Because if you thought plastic bags killed lots of seals, so like plastic sharks, that would be that's a, that'll be my um, science fiction nightmare. Uh, but um, yeah, <laughs> things like that that'll be all the stuff. Oh, I know why I'm not getting booked on shows. That's but that's my I uh, that's an inside my head thing. Also, here's here's a picture of a of like random stuffs. Um, all right, I think this uh, my t is my time coming to an end, AJ. How much? Um, I would normally I would say yes, but I want to hear that thing that you weren't gonna say. Oh, which thing? The, the, the what? The. Yeah, the... You, you, you said I know why I don't get booked on shows. Oh yeah, it's because like as far as like um like hustling and it's like or the parts that I'll like recede or like I'll get invited to like maybe workshops and then like I'll consistently just be like I, like I want to be in. It's like the fact, I think it's very, like, or no, it's, um, 
it's like clear that it's like wow she doesn't take this seriously or it's like she's not even trying like no one no one says that in that but it's like it there's something imbalanced that's like a steady imbalance that uh it's like all those oh i'm working on a bunch of things but that's like all a perpetual state but uh also now of course there's a i feel like never one reason to be like no no it's covid19 that's the reason why <laughs> So now that's a, the world is changing all the time and so are we and like the outsides are the insides and it's vice versa. <laughs> uh, but my name is Katie Baker and uh, thank you back. I'll throw the microphone back to AJ. Hey, Penny. Yeah, Katie Baker, everyone. Well, in, in, in fairness to you, Katie Baker, um, those workshops are a freaking nightmare. They mm. are the worst thing and then when you try to get through uh material you're working on uh 12 people talking at once and trying to give you a tag and there was one day i was just like you know what that's it i'm out boom mm -hmm. and then i just do <laughs> <laughs> the virtual open mics only uh to prepare my material and that's it i no longer do the workshops um especially the ones through like uh facebook live or uh, oh, the, um facebook messenger uh, yeah, Facebook Messenger. It's 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 a bloodbath. I love Ed Roy, uh -huh. but he'll have like the workshops through Facebook Messenger, and I want to kill myself right there. I haven't been suicidal mm -hmm. in quite a while, but just like it was coming back, huh. um, and, and it's just like it's bad enough through Zoom. Why have it through Facebook Messenger where you have to wait a second in between each person talking, <gasps> um, and then there's twelve t people talking at once. So Katie, I don't blame you for that um it, at all it's nerve-wracking kind of and i, I it, yeah it is but we just we just hit the mics we do we we do our shows we do our time and then when this comes back in 2022 like, <laughs> 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 we're gonna be good that was a long-winded um this pandemic's gonna last uh forever joke uh <laughs> but uh that lady was saying that uh, the plastic bags kills seals. Not only does it kill uh -huh. seals, it killed seal. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie, if we're ever going to survive, we're never going to survive unless we get a little crazy. A little, a little. <laughs> yeah, a little crazy. Save those seals and seal. Because yes! he, he was trapped in one of those bags. That's how he got those scars. Oh, no. uh, yeah, so we need to protect Seal. I'm going to get canceled because of it. <laughs> he's um, going to sue you. Oh, yeah. H Heidi Klum is going to come after me or, or whoever he's dating now. Um, but, but guys, before I bring up your, your next comic, um, the person that booked me on like a couple of the corporate shows, um, his official job title was called Chief People Officer. He said, uh, I, I know people make fun of my title, chief people officer. Uh, uh, what do you think? But that sounds like the most adorable title. Uh, <laughs> at the same time, it sounds like the most horrific title. Uh, it just depends on how it's said in any news report. Like, well, well, the chief people officer, he brought he brought bags of donuts to the orphans. It's just like, oh, that's so sweet of him. <laughs> we finally caught the chief people officer. That monster. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how you say it, but it can go either way. Um, but speaking of either way, no, that made no sense in the... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, well that's, that's better than my other ones. Uh, speaking of semen, uh, please welcome Brianna Woodward now. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so to, two comics to go, and that's going to be our night. And then we got the live chat in which uh, anybody that's in the Zoom call uh, can do, can participate in. Um, but only in that, we're not going to stream the, uh, we're not going to stream the after show in Facebook Live, uh, just in case any of us say anything cancelable. Uh, we might post up uh, <laughs> like the 20 minute chat that we do afterwards, and we'll be able to put up uh, 90 seconds. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like um, before I bring up uh, your next comic, uh, if you haven't shared the live stream already on Facebook, uh, 
please do. That's on my wall. That's also on uh, Anivir Arts. So whether you're watching here or uh, or on Facebook, please share it. Uh, I get we were up to nine people. Woo! And by the end of this next person's set, I want there to be at least nine and a half. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so ladies and gentlemen. Uh, your second uh, Boston uh, Comedy Festival finalist uh, of, of the night. Uh, weird to say that on any show. Uh, but <laughs> been working with this person for, for a while. Um, I enjoy being, being around them. They, uh, they, they just send out an aura of nice and uh, also helps that they are fantastically funny. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Let's hear it. Round of applause for Sherilyn. Oh, okay. So I was jogging the other day and I found a dirty old pair of boxer briefs, some scratch tickets, a little mini broken bottle of fireball liquor, which is obviously disturbing and gross. But I'm thrilled that my ex has taken up jogging. (laughs) Yeah. So contrary to popular belief, there's actually an upside to dating a drug addict. It makes you a very simple, patient, non-materialistic person because they steal all of your shit and they sell it. (laughs) We'll just, we'll just get down to brass tacks here. So the first and only time that I was ever choked during sex, it is going to go there. (laughs) I wasn't scared. I wasn't nervous. I was actually super excited about it because the sex was so bad. (laughs) I was hoping he would just kill me. So so if you couldn't tell by that one, I'm the small margin of the population that doesn't respond well to Zoloft. All the Zoloft users out there. He said, why is it? He said, why is it so hard for you to orgasm? Why is it such a challenge for you? And I had to explain to him that SSRIs, antidepressants cause you to have a dip in your libido. But I also had to explain to him, I have to keep taking them to keep dating you. (laughs) so pick your poison with that one right um i do struggle with severe depression so to help me get up and get my day going i like to set small personal goals for myself just to prove that despite the odds i can still achieve anything i set my mind to and still be depressed (laughs) i i am a sober comic i recently celebrated over six years of sobriety which is a big milestone for me thanks there's there's a lot of things I miss about drinking. One thing is that ma- that nice, loose, warm, initial buzz feeling you get, you know, like right before you ruin your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. In all honesty, I chose the path of sobriety because I feel like there's nothing worse than a sloppy, angry, inebriated, drunk person just in your face trying to start an argument with you. It's like lay off, mom. <laughs> no. No, my, no my parents are great they've been married over 35 years and I attribute that to the fact that they complement each other well because my mom drinks during the day and my dad drinks at night so yeah. <laughs> there's, there's ever an emergency they're both covered so they say marriage is all about teamwork right so um, I highly recommend when you're older for personal reasons financial reasons to move back in with your parents for a while because it'll give you a newfound respect and better understanding of elder abuse. <laughs> so my mom's getting my mom's getting older and she keeps saying, I don't want to get to the point where I'm really old and I'm really sick. So if I get to that point, do me a favor, put me out of my misery and just push me down the stairs. So you see where I, so you see where I get my depression from. Oh man. And I had to, and I had to say, look, mom, and I had to say, look, mom, I love you so much. And we don't have to wait. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, my family is great. I spend a lot of time with my nephew. He's almost three and he does this funny thing where he likes to go poop under his toy basketball hoop in his playroom. And I have to say, Colin, I just say, Colin, dude, you can't do that. That's my spot. So, which would be a great segue into the fact that I am single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm single, but I prefer to say unavailable because I feel like that's the only time guys are interested. So. <laughs> it's tough. Dating is really rough. There's a lot of changes with being 37 and single versus when I was 27 and single. One of the main things is when a guy would reject me when I was 27, I used to say things like, but why, why don't you like me? 
And at 37, when a guy rejects me, I say things like, exactly. <laughs> on the same page there. Um, it really is tiring dating now. Um, when I, when I tell a guy I want to sleep with him, I really mean I want to go to sleep. Like I'm exhausted. So I dated some. <laughs> I dated someone recently and I really liked him, but he had really bad breath and I didn't know how to break it to him. So before we kissed, I would put two Altoids in my mouth, hoping one would make its way into his mouth, hoping he would get that. <laughs> it is tough. Um, I'm tired of the assumptions at this age. I went to the mechanic and he wouldn't pass my car for inspection because he said the passenger side seatbelt wasn't working. And I said, look, I'm 37 and single. I can assure you nothing is going in the passenger side seatbelt. Besides food, <laughs> so, good there. you get so much generic advice at this age when you're single too. People always say, if you're not happy with yourself, you can't be with somebody else. If you're not happy with yourself, you can't be in a relationship with somebody else. But I beg to differ on that because I feel like if you're depressed and you're angry and you're bitter and you're miserable, you can take somebody else down with you. So, <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually my one gift and I'm more than happy to do so. So no, just so many things I don't care about at this age. Uh, for example, when a guy asked me to text a sexy photo of myself, I forget to crop my snacks out of the background. <laughs> so, yeah, so he knows what he's getting himself into. Um, but yeah, it's been um, just drop it up here. We're almost at the end of the week. Super excited. I'm really sick of work. My boss tries to be friends with everyone in my office. And he pulled me aside and told me that he said, I feel like you don't like me. I feel like you don't like me. And I would never want him to feel that way. I want him to know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. I'm Cher. Thanks for having me. Good. Solid set. Solid set. <laughs> Almost um, Friday. They, they, like you talk about being being un, undateable. Um they they should let us know just because you're a comic and that's uh, it. Um yeah, well it, it, and other things. <laughs> oh, it, it, yeah, but we'll let you get into those on on your on your sets and and and, and whatnot. Uh, looking forward to doing more shows with you uh, as 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 per usual. And then, um, uh, like I said Sam, to Sam earlier, uh, congratulations to making it to the final. And that, that's that's well, awesome. Having me, thank you. Yeah, and then um, I was gonna try to like wait to have you uh, back next month, but then I figure since nobody dropped it, yeah, let's have Cher on now. Uh, yeah, if anybody, if anybody bails, let me know. I'm around. <laughs> I will keep that in mind. The, uh, <laughs> ladies, the ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to have a live chat afterwards where we're going to talk a lot of trash. Um, Andy, oh, we God. should just name the live chat. Uh, you might get canceled. We should just name it that. We should just name it that, like uh, Rodney Norman, the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. I've never seen him so vicious uh, in that. And, oh my uh, god! <laughs> I'm scared. He still never, he still never swore. Uh, he still never. He, swore. He's never sworn in the whole time I've known him. Only I've never heard him swear. Yeah, like um, even as uh, Ray at our, our show, um, he he doesn't care. He'll dance around it, but he'll never say say anything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are on time. This is awesome. Uh, we got your final comedian of the evening. If you haven't shared this yet on the uh, on the Facebook page, um, it's kind of too late. But uh, you can <laughs> <laughs> but we can still get that eleventh viewer. Um, so uh, this final individual, uh, dear dear friend, started uh, started headlining shows uh, recently until this uh all happened um i'm looking forward to seeing when this comes back and seeing him pick up where, where he left off because he's the shit i used gender specific <laughs> okay um, if it, it's okay if you're not wrong right, well <laughs> she like, is not, just a delight like, uh, <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen give it up for alan burrow is fun all right a bunch of depressed people staring at a screen for looking for validation like, we're not getting it really so like, <laughs> like more i guess i don't know um yeah this is fun uh ag was saying i i was headlining yeah yeah i was i was getting up a lot uh i'm a fucking crowd work comic so i do a lot better with the crowd so if you want 
someone bomb with material. Tune in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, funny like uh, being on Zoom because um, you know, like we don't need, wear, need pants or anything. But if we, if our face or our hair is fucked up, it still like comes through on the video. So I don't know if anyone's had this problem, but like I had like a little pimple that was like under the skin and clearly not ready to come out. Like, you know, like you, you, you test it, you go to the bathroom, you stare in the mirror, you work at it from different angles. You, you, you know, we, we all have our own tricks. I'm sure ladies, boys, whatever. Um, but like <laughs> five minutes into it, it's just liquid and blood. And it's like, you know what? It's official. This thing's not ready to be popped. Let's go to the living room. Right. And what do you do? You go right to the living room and everything's fine. And, and you're good and you're going to wait till, you know what? Let me go check on that pimple again. And you go right back in like four minutes. <laughs> it's going to be any fucking different. I don't know if anyone else. That. I ended up just pulling out all my beard hairs because I think I'm, uh, who's corporate? I have a feeling it's like fucking Tyler Swain or something. Oh, no, it's, it's someone. <laughs> it's one of my uh, strange internet friends. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> Tyler. Well, at least that's way better <laughs> than Tyler Swain. Yeah. <laughs> It's someone who's just fucking trolling and just like enjoying like me screaming. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were talking about sad stuff. I think like everyone touched on like suicide at some point, which is, uh, I don't know. I, I had a like interesting childhood. So like my parents, you know, they stayed together, which was nice. Uh, but it was, it was weird because like my mom, she was one of nine kids. So like she grew up not very affectionate, you know what I mean? And uh, and my dad's actually deaf, like he's completely deaf in one ear, uh, partially deaf in the other. So as like a little kid, besides not receiving like any hugs, I also had no one to listen to any conversations I wanted to have. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, dad, you didn't need to hear to play catch me in the backyard, did you? <laughs> 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 or not hit mom, no. No. Oh. <laughs> That's the thing, guys. I never hit my mom. I never hit my mom. But you know what? We went there. We saw it. We tested it. We dipped our toes in the water and we kind of didn't really like it. Okay, that's fine. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird. Uh, I did try to share it to my Facebook, by the way. Uh, let, let's say it's good that I didn't. Okay, so I don't get fired from me. Um, uh, who is it? Uh, um, Sam. How old is Sam? Is Sam in high school or college? Yeah, yeah, he's in high school. He's Dude, that's uh, Sam. As someone who's like, like yeah. we share like our thirties, and you know, we're chasing the dream. Uh, I genuinely <laughs> have, like, I mean it, like from the bottom of my heart. Uh, go fuck yourself for starting so early. <laughs> like, as much as AJ and we're all like building you up, we're like, yeah, this is kids the fucking competition. Let's. Uh, I will bully <laughs> <laughs> I fucking just I mean I mean I will assault you in a fucking alleyway boy uh, <laughs> you know I'm fucking with you buddy that's awesome yeah. uh, so I grew up like I played a lot of sports I'm sure like Sam still in Little League but I also played Little League <laughs> <laughs> so like the thing is, is like you probably all like we all played like soccer or dance or, you know, we did an activity at some point, I'll assume, you know, whether it was athletic or not. And the whole point is like to, to socialize, to learn about other kids, realize that, like, you know, uh, as long as you do your best, that's all that matters. We all bleed the same blood, like that type of shit. Right. Uh, so I was, you know, decent athlete. And then I played football. OK. Um, and I was the quarterback. So. Basically, like I had a lot of pressure on me. If anyone doesn't know football, it's a guy that, you know, gets the ball hiked to him and he hands it off. He makes the passes, whatever. Uh, Tom Brady, that's quarterback. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Every, uh, <laughs> youth, every cheerleader organization in all of America has this one cheer where all the rules for like being nice and kind to one another and fair competition goes out the window uh, and they're allowed to actively talk shit uh, to the other team, but just the other team's quarterback. Okay. Uh, like little <laughs> old me, like the under center and, uh, the, the cheerleaders would be over here doing this, uh, defense, push them back, sack that quarter back. Woo. Defense, push them back, sack that quarter back. Woo. Defense, push them 
and they just repeated the shit out of it until I had a panic attack in the middle of a game and needed a timeout. Uh, very. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, well, well, me and my mother, we like came up with a plan because, like, I'd seriously be like, you know, like dry heaving, like while I'm calling the cadence, right? Uh, like choking on my mouth guard and stuff. So we were like, all right, we'll we'll draw a smiley face on your palm. <laughs> adorable right ladies smiley face on my palm so that way right and then um my my dad would high five it my sister would high five it and then my mom would kiss it adorable uh so that way when i was like under center right and i was calling the cadence like ready set i could always just you know look at my palm and remember like my family loves me and my and my coach that I'm a pussy. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's funny. Like uh, quarterbacks, like uh, clearly, uh, I'm like, I'm sure you guys have done this where like you're thinking about a joke and then you like remember that you you just missed like a big chunk of it and now you're gonna I'm gonna go back. So uh, I used to choke my mouth guard. Cause like I wouldn't uh, mold it before games. You know, if it's molded, it fits to your teeth. But mine would uh, like touch the back of my throat, so I'd be like dry heaving in the middle of the cadence. And <sighs> if you've ever listened to like an NFL game or a college game, even high school, you'll you'll hear that the quarterbacks actually deepen their voice, right? Like they go like down, sir. Like that's not their natural voice, but it's just like the way you're supposed to do it. Whatever, call it fucking toxic masculinity, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know this though. So I'm like nine, 10, 11 going against these teams and these other kids who like look like my size, they're like, damn, shit. And I'm like, oh shit, like these kids are fucking gone through puberty. Really, just no one taught me how to do that. So I would just be singing the cadence like a bitch. Like I'd literally be like, and like the future hookers were doing their cheer at me and it was just a whole, a whole big mess. <laughs> Um, <laughs> let's be honest like cheerleading is a sport it is a sport it is a sport but there's a lot of benefits to cheerleading um off the field uh anyway that was, uh, i'm not talking about like the, the the young girls but i'm saying as they grow up flexible all right uh yeah. <laughs> like i just think it, it's funny that like um you guys see the, the the series Cheer on Netflix? See that pretty cool documentary. Anyone? Yeah, whatever. So basically, if you didn't, <laughs> didn't know, it follows this junior college national team around, and they're like filthy. Like they recruit people from all over, and uh, a bunch of like the girls and guys on the team have like you know, hundreds hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram because they do like cool tricks. You know, like think of it like an IG model, but they're also cheering for college on full on a full scholarship. So it's pretty neat. Um, but the thing is, it's like, again, like, I, 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 I'm that guy. Like, I, I want, like, equal rights. Like, I, if I have daughters, like, they're definitely going to be in the gym. Like, we're going to, you know, like, treat them all the same. It killed me, though, to listen to these little girls talk about their heroes. So, like, they stuck a microphone in, like, this eight-year-old girl's face. And they were like, hey, tell us why Gabby Butler's your favorite gymnast. You know. And I'm looking for, like, stuff that, you know, sports. Like, oh, she works hard. Like, she's strong. And she does, like, the coolest flips. Like, something, just fucking anything that's not, like, not a sport. And I quote, this girl said, they stuck the mic in this little girl's face. And here's her three things on why Gabby is her favorite. She's gorgeous. I love her makeup. And she's so flexible. (laughs) Just like, uh, dude, like, that's the fucking reason. Stay with a girlfriend for too long. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's not why someone's your favorite athlete. That's why you want to, you know, do things to people. Um, so, oh my God. <laughs> like, that would be like, like everyone knows, like, I like basketball. Like, but they'd be like, Alan, like, you know, why do you think LeBron's a good player? And I'm just like, oh, like, wide shoulders, strong jaw, and a massive cock. Like, you know what I mean? That's not, <laughs> that's nothing to do with, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm really counting on that girl to like bring it home for all like the, the, the feminists out there and be like, yes, do your, do your best. She's like, I like her eyelashes. Like, <laughs> all right, uh, one more. Um, we'll do a, a joke to you. Uh, so, Little League um, is actually like, you know how like Little League World Series comes on during the summer? 
it didn't happen this summer because of COVID. But like normally you just go on ESPN and you'll actually see like the 12 year old teams playing each other. And I didn't make this up real stat. It's actually one of the highest rated like sporting events on TV. I'm not talking about for kids, but I mean, literally that's including like NBA, NFL, NHL, the little league world series get some of the yeah. most. Yeah. So I, I think like, you might be like, oh, like, is baseball still America's pastime? It's like, no, I don't think it shows that baseball is still, like, the favorite sport. It's more like this country's running rampant with pedophiles. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, who else is tuning in to see these, like, slender 11- and 12-year-olds, like, play their little hearts out? You know what I mean? It's not, it's not a guy who's just like, oh, I was going to watch the Red Sox, but instead I'll watch this unnamed kid from Iowa. It's like, no, they're... Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll just uh, end on like dead uncomfortableness. I think that's <laughs> fair. I think right now, if I was on stage, I would just not even say a word. I'd slowly back away from the mic and just kind of point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think we're done. I think we're done. I'm Alan. <laughs> Alan Moreau, everyone. Yay. Uh, that, that was, um, that was. Um, Alan, I have newer stuff I'm loving a lot. I can't wait till, uh, till it comes back on stage and that we see it because, um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the crowd work guys, um, it's, it's yeah. interesting seeing a lot of them create material, uh, have, from this. Yeah. And I didn't mean to cut you off, but like it shows, like I've talked to like writer, you know, you, a lot of you guys are like true writers and they're like, yeah, like you really see the flaws in your comedy if you you know, like, for example, if I rely on a big or I rely on a, a hot crowd, it's like, well, you know, it doesn't matter what your, you know, if your jokes aren't good, like, you, you know what I mean? Like, whatever, you mm. see the flaws in an extended set, you know what I mean? When, like, you need to, like, hit stuff. So it's good. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, it's taken a lot of out, a lot of um, fucking shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, anyway. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. It's 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 taken a lot of shit out of us, like, um, because of because of zoom and all this and doing shows like these it just shows how you tell a joke in general because right. um, I, I learned that i need need to get a little better with my facial expressions which, which uh yeah. zoom, zoom has helped me out a lot with that and i've probably produced more material in the past seven months than i have like uh the five yeah. years in comedy prior to that mm -hmm. yeah um and um, I, I, lo I love seeing you develop material. Like um, I'm, I'm loving seeing, seeing uh, uh, Parada develop material too. Um, yep. Br Brad Pierce still calling yep. everybody homo, uh, no matter uh. what. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 just it's just fascinating to to yeah. see all that. It's but but folks, thank you for joining us for the um, for the comedy show portion. We ended on time, which is awesome.